Our first discussion is on an integrated architecture for common ground in collaboration by Denson George. Hello, everyone. My name is Denson George, and today I'll be presenting regarding the paper, An Integrated Architecture for Common Ground and Collaboration. This was written with my co-authors, Dr. Christopher Gate, myself, my fellow Rutgers PhD students, and our advisor, Dr. Matthew Stone. So an important part of our home talk project is common ground reasoning. So we define common ground reasoning as the mutual knowledge about the relevant state of the world and the relevant status of teammates' actions and plans. So this is a body of knowledge that's being used in order to make sure that everyone's on the same page. So one common example of using, uh, co common ground is being used uh, all the time with us, right? So one example would be, let's say you're cooking something, right? So here we have sweet pancakes and squid pancakes. So both of them are pancakes. They use the same uh, basic ingredients, but then they get a little bit more complicated afterwards. So let's say you're making sweet pancakes. You have all the ingredients laid out. Um, you have your berries, your pancake mix, et cetera. And then you forgot about the sugar. So your partner comes into a room and you ask them, hey, can you get me that jar? Now, your partner, seeing all the ingredients laid out, all the steps you've already done, will be able to infer that you're not making squid pancakes. So she'll give you the sugar instead of giving you a jar of squid or soy sauce, et cetera. So the same way that our partner is able to achieve common ground with us, we want virtual systems, virtual agents, to be able to achieve common ground with us. And so our project is about maintaining common ground across action and language. So to do this set of, uh, to do common ground reasoning, you need a diverse skill set. This includes understanding actions, um, this being previous actions, current actions, and future actions. You also need to be able to understand language. So the virtual agent will need to respond to the user, be able to understand what the user is saying. And the virtual agent will also need to be able to ask and give clarification. So if a human is going down a hallway and the hallway divides into east and west, the system needs to be able to ask the human, are you going east or are you going west? The same way the human can also ask the system, if it's going down a hallway, are you going east or west? And needs to be able to give that clarification. So to do this, we describe a new architecture, Lemming, for integrating these diverse skills with the reusable components, so components that already exist. So during this presentation, I've already given an introduction. I'm going to go a little bit more into my problem statement by discussing some uh, related work, then go over a few examples um, using our system architecture, then go into discussion, limitations, future work, and end this all with a conclusion. So some models that we got our inspiration from, uh, one of them was decision theoretic dialogue models. So these models use probability and then using uh, probability on, they are able to determine whether they have common ground with the user. So the system is able to infer that they have common ground with the user by just taking in the state of the world. And if it doesn't have common ground, it then asks a question to make sure that it achieves common ground. If it has common ground, then everything's okay. Now, one limitation of this is that they don't consider future practical actions. Another model is the collaborative agent model. So these collaborative agent models are usually uh, for having collaboration with a system that's taking actions based on what the user is telling it to do. So one example of this is collagen. So for collagen, uh, some of the limitations were that goals need to be known in advance and they had scripted responses. Another example is cogent that couldn't do common ground reasoning. And another example is Cohen. Uh, but for Cohen's system, they didn't have humans able, uh, being able to collaborate through actions. So the human couldn't take actions side by side with the machines. So our work takes inspiration from these. Um, we're able to use a probabilistic uh, planning and plan recognition mod module. So this allows us to take in probabilities. We also take in consideration um, previous current state of the world and also future state of the world by doing planning and plan recognition. And we also allow for parallel goals, so we can have multiple goals, and so we can have interweaving plans. Um, we also have free responses, we can do common ground reasoning, and we can allow humans and virtual agents to both do actions, whether it's practical actions or discourse actions. 
So some strategies that we do to achieve this is we allow for language to disambiguate action. So this is something we do pretty often. Uh, if I say I'm going to triage a victim and that victim is in room three, when I walk down the hallway, you'd be able to infer that I'm going to the room where the victim is, in this case, room three. So this is done through a process we call filtering. So if a system looks at this, when you walk down the hallway, there's going to be multiple rooms there. There might be room one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, since you said I'm going to triage the victim, you can filter out all the other rooms and keep the room where the victim is. Another example is that uh, another strategy that we use is having goals disambiguate language. So here we have a few shapes on the ground and there's a triangle slot. And so the human says, could you hand that to me? In this case, the system should be able to infer that the human needs the triangle and pass the triangle to the user. So in this case, we have the word that, which is being a discourse referent. And this, we uh, refer to this as anchoring, where you attach the, when you match the meaning of that to the triangle. Another important case is there's going to be cases where you don't have common ground with your system. Um, so in this case, you need to have contributions being clarified. Those contributions can be utterances, actions, plans, etc. So in the scenario where you're going down the hallway, um, if you don't know where the user is going, you need to ask, are you going east or west? So the way we do this is through this uh, Lemming systems architecture. So at the top path over here, we're handling language. At the bottom path over here, we're doing planning and plan recognition, which is powered through Elixir. So at the top, the user says a phrase. That phrase is then uh, goes through the NLU. The NLU then puts that into a logical form. At the same time, when the user is doing actions, these observations are being recorded and put into our planning recognition algorithm that generates a list of explanations. So now our logical form and explanations come together to go through the anchoring and filtering process we just went over with the previous examples, and they update the public state. Now with this information, the system is able to deliberate whether it should take a communicative action goal or a practical action goal or both. So now let's go into an example. So as we were talking before, we're in the process of making sweet pancakes. You ask, can you pass me that jar? And while doing this, you've already done a number of steps. So the only missing, so you just forgot the ingredient sugar, but you've done a number of other steps. So now this phrase goes through the NLU. And now we get a discourse representation structure, pass with four variables, A, U, M, J, where A is the action, U is can you, um, so you, uh, pass me is M, and jar refers to that jar. While on the bottom, we have we're generating explanations on what's going to happen next, right? So in this case, we have, okay, we're missing sugar. So now, using this logical form and the action explanations we generated, we can perform anchoring and filtering. In this case, we're going to be doing anchoring, where we match the J to the jar of sugar, that's what, which is what we need, according to our explanations. So now, we update the public state, saying that we need jar of sugar, and now we can do deliberation. So now the system passes the sugar and responds OK to confirm that they're complying with the user's request. So we can change the scenario up a little bit. So let's say you haven't really done much. You're just starting out making your pancakes. don't really have that many ingredients. You haven't even started uh, mixing the ingredients together. Uh, a long time ago, you mentioned, I'm going to make sweet pancakes. And then at some point you mentioned, can you pass me that jar? Now at this point, you don't really have that many actions done. So you might just have pancake mix. But with pancake mix, you can make squid pancakes or sweet pancakes, right? But we've already filtered away the sweet, uh, squid pancakes because we mentioned before that we're going to be making sweet pancakes. And so we already filtered away the squid pancakes. And so our public state remembers this, that we're making sweet pancakes. And so when we come across this scenario, we can go through it and 
have the jar of sugar, and J will be the jar of sugar, because that's what our explanations produce. So let's go over the example where you don't have any of that information. You don't know what the, you are, the user is just starting out, so they don't have many actions to rely on, and the user never mentioned their intention. So you ask, can you pass me that jar? Now, in this case, there's two different explanations. There's the explanations of uh, making squid pancakes, and there's explanations of doing sweet pancakes. So if you have your jar of sugar and soy sauce right next to each other, the system won't know which one to pick. Right, so J will equal either sugar or soy sauce. System's not really sure. So during the deliberation process, it decides that it needs to communicate to the users asking a question to achieve that common ground. What are you making? So currently our work is proof of concept. It's a work in progress. Right now, uh, we're looking to have richer uh, semantic grounding. Right now, we're only, we're focusing on simple uh, ref referential expressions, and we want to be able to do more gra semantic grounding. Um, we also want to have more robust dialogue management and plan inference. So for our future state, we're going to be building a virtual assistance system and analyze the interactions and confirm that achieving common ground is leading to success. So in conclusion, our architecture integrates language and action understanding to deliver integrated interpretations of ongoing activity. So this allows us to recognize common ground, to detect, diagnose, and respond to problematic situations, and to reduce and avoid ambiguity in selecting plans and selecting actions to meet goals. So our design combines a number of lessons we've learned from decision theoretical models and collaborative agent models. So we've learned that probabilistic reasoning is important. Um, so we're integrating that. We're also learned that planning and plan recognition is important. We've learned that having multiple parallel goals is important, and that it's important to incorporate to allow for both humans and virtual agents to take actions and discourse actions together. This work was supported by the Air Force Research Lab and various NSF awards. Thank you, everyone. Are there any questions? If you want to work on common ground, you have to use coffee making as an example. <laughs> uh, can the user, can the human user lead your system off a cliff? I'm sorry? Well, you named it Lemming. <laughs> Uh, so LEMIC stands for Lexalized Multimodal Inferencing sure for Natural Ground. <laughs> no. More seriously, so I, I assume this grew out of the, there was a DARPA project uh, on this kind of stuff, you know, and, 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 um, and the SIFT group has published papers, given talks on this, and I'm just curious yep. what, how this relates to the previous work. Is, it, is this, you say it's preliminary, but I know you're building on stuff that was pretty advanced, so, so what what shifted here? Were you unhappy with the earlier earlier system? Uh, so this is uh, a component that we're going to be using and combine everything all together. It's what? It's a component that's going to be used and everything's going to be combined together. But so you're saying the previous system lacked this component and that this would give it new, new, more? I understand this is an integrated system. I'm asking about the prior work at SIFT, which dealt with collaborative problem solving through dialogue with grounded language. So I'm asking what's new here apart from the old stuff? Um, so what two years ago? So what's new here is the architecture that we're proposing. And is the architecture better than the old architecture, you think? I am not familiar with the old architecture. Okay. Chris architecture, will have to. The architecture, I, if you want me to use the mic, I can use the mic, but the architecture is much better. The, <laughs> the bottom two boxes are like and the top stuff is all the wonderful language model that we're getting from uh, from Rux, right? And the the filtering, that active filtering is a, an addition to or filtering the sets of explanations that Elixir was building. So we are very much building on everything you saw uh, in the past. It's not. It's not even. Not even. This is yes and. No, I'm I'm happy with that. I just wanted to hear hear about the connection. Thank you. Um, 
So there are no more questions on Slack yet. Are there any other questions? Okay, I think we can move on to our next presentation. <laughs> so we're just trying to come up with two different recipes that have the same base that are completely different. And Dr. Matthew is the one who recommended us squid pancakes. <laughs> so you would have to ask him, he would be apparently the expert. <laughs> Thank you, everyone.